Good day, everyone. In this lecture series, we will consider the basic concepts of information theory and coding. Now, information theory follows directly from Claude Elwood, Shannon's 1948 original paper titled The Mathematical Theory of Communication. And in his paper, he was able to propose the possibility of data transmission over a channel with minimal probability of error. That is, it is possible, therefore he showed the possibility rather of data recovery if the probability of error reduces to zero. Hence, two fundamental limits were described in that work, which are the data compression limit and the data transmission limit. So in other words, in Shannon's original work, he was able to describe that at the point of transmission, we have to re replace the symbols or the bits with the minimum number of bits on the average, which we can as well refer to as the data compression limit. And over the channel, so long this limit, which we can as well call the entropy, as we will see shortly, that is entropy H, as we'll see shortly, this parameter or this data compression parameter H has to be less than the capacity of the channel for error-free transmission. So in other words, for us to receive or better to recover the transmitted data over this channel, then this must be less than the capacity such that the extreme limit therefore describes the data transmission limit being C and it is the capacity of, of the channel, you can say the channel capacity. So should we have X at this point? over the channel and y at this point. So meaning if x was transmitted and y was received such so that y is either the same as x or better still an approximate or estimated value being the distorted parameter of x, then you will observe that the communication process bears some level of relationship between what was transmitted and what was received, such that we could therefore mathematically represent the entropy and the capacity in terms of the mutual relationship between the transmitted symbol and the received symbol Y. So that we say is the mutual information. Now, if that is true, if that is true, therefore, at the lower limit, we must have a minimum value, while at the upper limit, we must have a maximum value, such that both will be the same should the error or probability of error reduce to zero. That is, the error, probability of error, say lambda, must tend to zero. And should this system be in place, then error-free transmission is possible. Hence, information theory and coding, information theory and coding encompasses two broad topics, okay? which is the data compression
where we now have to consider this parameter, the entropy, H, and then the other limit is the data transmission limit, data transmission. Where we now have to consider its parameter, which is the channel capacity. C. Hence, you observe that uh, in our regular communication system, the data compression limit addresses. minimum data rates, okay? While the data transmission limits addresses the modulation scheme problems, okay? Modulation scheme problems. Okay. So for us to be able to now, let us still provide a formal expression for the mutual information, then we first have to know what information really means. And then we try to figure out what the mutual information is such that once we are able to relate, or better still observe X from Y and then minimize the value or maximize the value, then we should be able to solve the information theory and coding problem. Okay. Now, to put things in perspective, according to Claude Elwood Shannon, he said, or better still postulated, that the fundamental problem of communication is that of reproducing at one point, either exactly, approximately a message selected at another point. So it is therefore probable that the selected message may be either received distorted or that are still undistorted. That is X over the channel. Here we observe Y, we observe S from Y, so that Y is either the same as X undistorted or it's an approximate value probably a distorted value. So if, there, if we therefore have the possibility of receiving either undistorted or distorted version of the transmitted symbol, this therefore brings some level of uncertainty. So we're not sure such that the information contained, the information contained in the message may be defined as quantified uncertainty. So, and this, we did check, we can digitally model this. As a random variable, okay? Hence, we can conclude if this is the transmitter and this is the receiver, we can therefore conclude that information is the measure of uncertainty associated with the transmitted message symbol X. Okay, so information is a measure of uncertainty. Associated with transmitted, the transmitted on 
message three. So if for instance, say for a system, which transmits messages M1, M2, all the way to MK, for instance, with probabilities of occurrence P1, P2 to PK, P sub K. The amount of information transmitted through the message MK with the probability PK will be I sub K equal to log one over P sub K base A. And now this also is the same by laws of log reading, negative log P sub K base A, such that the base should it be 10, that's to base 10, then the unit of information will be Hartley, or better still half or ban. Okay? And should the unit, should the base be base two, as we'll be playing with in, in this course, then the unit will be bits. What if it is natural logarithm to base E, then if A is the same as E, then we will have nuts. Good. So based on the definition of information as the measure of uncertainty associated with a transmitted message, and then its mathematical formulation, we can therefore define some properties. So since I, the information is the same as log one over P sub K, for instance, let's consider this two, so we we'll not have to represent two all the time. Now, when there is no uncertainty, say P sub K is the same as one, then the information will be zero. So no information when we are certain. So there's no information gained when we are absolutely certain about the outcome of an event. So if the receiver knows the message being transmitted, the amount of information carried is zero. And then if the probability of occurrence is far, far less than one, for instance, then the information gain will be far, far greater than zero. So in other words, the information takes a limit for log one over P sub K for zero less or equal to P sub K less or equal to one. It's greater or equal to zero. So there's never loss of information if the level of uncertainty of the outcome is high. So the higher the uncertainty, the higher the information gain. And also, the third property, if we are given P sub K and P sub J, for instance, as the probability of occurrences, then we can define the composite information I, K, J as the sum of the information contributed by the individual probability distributions. Okay, so we can prove this so that I, K, J will be the same as log one over P, K, P, J, and by laws of log reading, so this will be log one over PK plus log one over PJ. So this now will give us uh, IK plus IJ. Okay. Also, if there are 
m equal to 2 to the power of n equally likely messages. Then the amount of information gained is n bits. Uh, it's about n bits. So that is, they are equally likely, so that p sub k is the same as one over n. So if that is true, then the information gained will be log one over p sub k, which is log one over one over m, which is the same as log m. And then we have m is the same as two to the power of two. I will not forget is base two. Log two to the power of n base two that will give us um, that will give us log two base two. That's n. So which is this process is what one. So that's n into bracket one will give us n bits, right? Okay, so since we already mentioned that the entropy has some relationship with the lower limit of mutual information, since we have to observe x from y at the lower limit, y the capacity has some relationship with the maximization of this mutual information, good. Now that we know what information is, our goal is to figure out this parameter, mutual information. And before we go any further, let's talk about entropy. Entropy H. Now, if information is the measure of uncertainty, then entropy is the same as average information, okay? Entropy is the same as average information, okay? Which is the same as total information divided by number of messages. So entropy is the average information associated with the random variable. Now this is the average information associated with the random variable. So if it is the average value, then it means it is the expected value of information. Okay, so it is expectation EP of log of one over PK, for instance. And we know the expectation parameter is the same as the sum of p sub k. And if that is true, then it means that the entropy is the same as the summation pk log one over pk. And this describes the ultimate data compression limit because we are actually taking the information on the average that can be transmitted over the communication channel. We can also derive the following properties from this definition, since entropy is the same as the expected value of information, then we see that the entropy is zero if the event is sure, that is when it is PK, or if it is, if it is one, or when it is impossible. So when the event is sure, then we have summation one of one over one. Already know that this reduces to zero. So one times zero, zero. OK. 
okay? And when it is impossible, you know, summation zero, or one over zero, although regardless of this value, zero times this is equal to zero. So when the event is sure or impossible, the entropy is zero. And the second property here is when now when the symbols are equally likely and independent, that is P sub K is the same as one over M for all values of M, then we see that the mutual, the entropy is the same as log M based to, right? So how do we show this? Say so it is equally likely. So H is the same as summation P K log one over M. So we can expand directly from there. So that will be PK log P1, that's a P1 log one over one P1 log one over M one log one over P1 plus P2 log one over P2 plus all the way to PM log one over PM. Now we know this is one over M, so that'll be one over M log one over one over M plus one over M log one over M plus all the way to one over M log one over M. So this is gonna give us one over M log M plus one over M log M then all the way to one over M log M. So we see that this is an end uh, log. So we have one over M into bracket M log M, right? And once this crosses this, so we have log M is two, right? We can also show that the upper bound on the entropy, upper bound on the entropy, H max is given as less, is, is less or equal to log M is two. Okay. So the entropy of X can also be interpreted as the expected value of the random variable or one of P as, as we already mentioned. And you will observe that the entropy depends on the probability distribution and not on the actual values, okay? So note, just note that the entropy, entropy H, does not depend on the actual values taken by the random variable. But only on the probabilities. Okay, so let us see if we could show this, the upper bound on the tree. So that will be upper bound, the entropy is given us. So, so let us uh, divide this board. Now we can recall the property for 
the natural logarithm, which is log to base e, if x is less or equal to x minus 1. This also can be written as natural logarithm of x less or equal to x minus 1 for all values of x greater or equal to 0. So if we consider two distributions, two probability distributions, so P1, so P1, P sub 1, say P sub 1, P sub 2, all the way to P sub n, and another probability distribution, Q1, Q sub 2, all the way to Q sub n. On the alphabet, X given us S sub 1, S sub 2, taking on values to S sub n of a discrete random of a discrete memoryless system, a discrete memoryless source. Now, consider that we have a measure, this of k, log q sub k over p sub k, this 2, for all values of k, taking on values from 1 to m. Then we can further expand expand this, this is in base 2, in base 10, by taking, uh, by resolving change of base. So we have a sigma p sub k, be the same as log to base 10, q k over p sub k, over log to base 10. And then if we multiply the right hand side of this expression because this is equal to this. So if we multiply true by log base e, for instance, then we are going to get sigma p sub k log q k over p sub k to be the same sigma p sub k E base 10 divided by 2 base 10 times QK sub K divided by base 10. So we are writing this into one, this crosses out, so we get this. And now the whole expression there is going to give us. Sigma PK log E base 2 times based on the change of base, right? So uh, it's also base 10, right? So we can now write log. QK over PK, basically, right? And from this expression here, we can therefore rewrite this and therefore the inequality slice in such that the entire expression here, so this now will be equal to or will be less than less less than or equal to less or equal to e base two so pk to bracket qk Now this is um, log x for which pkqk is x is less or equal to x minus one. Okay, so that is what we are saying here is the natural logarithm qk over pk is less or equal to 
QK, PK minus one, right? So that cannot stick it in steps then. So we can now have this, this list of order log is E, log E is two, sigma PK, into bracket QK, is this, yeah. pk minus one so this is the less r order with this two sigma if this crosses this so we have qk minus pk this is going to be less of order log with this two to bracket sigma QK minus sigma PK. And we already know that the sum of the probability distribution QK is the same as the sum of probability distribution QK, the PK rather, is the same as one. So if we say one minus one, then this reduces to zero. And then this entire expression reduces to zero such that the expression we have here which is less or equal to this, we now be less or equal to zero. So we now have sigma P sub K or QK over PK is less or equal to zero. So now we want to consider equally likely messages. So let's say QK, Q sub K is the same as one over M for all values of m, so that, so that all the symbols are equally likely. And if that is so, then we have sigma p sub k into bracket dog, we expand this now, qk plus log one over pk. Less of equal to zero. So sigma pk, qk plus sigma pk log one over qk is less of equal to zero. So this is now going to give us sigma pk log one over p. Now this is pk, okay? pk, pk, pk. PK is less or equal to negative sigma PK log QK. Now we already know by laws of logarithm that this is the same thing as this negative process, then uh, have one that's PK log one over QK. Now since QK is equally likely, then we have sigma pk log one over one over n, such that sigma pk log n. Okay, well, we already established that sum of pk and qk is the same as one. So this would be less of equal to one dot log m. So sigma pk of one over pk is less or equal to log m. Hence, the left hand side is the entropy with arbitrary probability distribution. So that such that this is the same. So H marks, which is less of equal to so good. And we can also relate our entropy in terms of the source symbol X and the Y 
symbol. If this is a source symbol, and then this is a destination y symbol, then the entropy of the source h of x is the same as sigma p of x so 1 over p of x y the output entropy or the destination entropy be the same as sigma p of y log 1 over p of y Also, we can define the conditional entropies. Conditional entropy. Okay. So, the conditional entropy of the channel input X, given that the output Y has been received, is also called the, equivo the, the equivocation, equivocation of X with respect to Y is given by the conditional entropy of X given Y as the same sigma, say XY. The joint probability distribution times log one over the conditional probability x given that y has been received. So the conditional entropy of the output y given that x was transmitted follows directly as the summation of the joint distribution, probability distribution, log one over the probability, the joint probability of y given that x was transmitted. And then we can also describe the joint entropy. And this follows directly also as the sum of the joint distribution log one over the probability of the joint distribution. Good. Now, the joint entropy can also be written in terms of the conditional entropies such that the joint entropy is the same as the conditional entropy of x given y plus the output entropy. And it can also be written as the conditional entropy of the output given x plus the source entropy. And this is referred to as the chain rule. So we can actually show this. Okay. Now for us to show that this is X, okay. The joint entropy is the same as the conditional entropy as a sum of the conditional entropy and the individual entropy. Now, note that sigma xy is the same as sigma x, sigma y, right? So, we already know that at the joint entropy, I already know 
the joint entry is x comma y. It's the same as sigma this x y p of x y log one over p of x y. And this also is the same as y negative p of x y p of x y. And we can recall this rule of this theorem. So we should just track this through. So I'll divide it board. This theorem, we know that the joint distribution is the same as the product of the conditional distribution times the individual distribution such that P of joint distribution between X and Y can also be written as the conditional probability of X given that Y given Y and times the probability of Y. Okay. So if that's what we get, then We can plug this into this, then we have joint entropy to be the same as negative xy p of xy x given y. Okay. I already know that this product we split or disintegrate into a sum, then we now have negative sigma of x, y to bracket log p of x given y plus log p of y. And this is the same. Can this further disintegrate this should be the same as negative sigma p of sy log of xy minus p of xy log p of y. Mm -hmm. Now, if we recall the law of total probability. We have that P of Y is the same as the summation P of the joint distribution, okay? This will be X, which is the same as X. P of Y given X times P of X by base law or rule. And if we consider P of X, then this would be summation Y, right? Okay, this is for discrete, for discrete random variables. So if we plug this into this, then sigma P of X, Y can be replaced as this, right? Such that we have of x, y, now be sigma p of x, y, p of x given y, that's minus, right, minus, then minus sigma p of y, log, one over P of Y. So from this, we can therefore conclude based on our previous 
definition that this is the same as p of x y log one over x y plus sigma p of y log one over p of y which is the same as the conditional entropy of x given y plus the output entropy In a similar vein, the same process can be used to show that the, condi that the conditional, or better still, that the joint entropy is the same as the sum of the conditional entropy of the output given the input plus the input entropy. Now that we've cleared this, let us consider relative, relative entropy, relative entropy. Now the relative entropy of two probability distributions, say P and Q, these are probability mass functions, say, P of x, P of x, is a measure of the distance between the probability mass function. That is the relative entropy between P and Q is the same as the sum P of x log P of x divided by P of x, which is the same as the expected value, the log, P of x, Q of x. So relative entropy is usually referred to as the callback, callback, Leibler divergence, or distance. And strictly speaking, the relative entropy is a measure of the inefficiency of assuming that the distribution is Q of X when the true distribution is actually P of X. So the relative entropy helps in measuring that inefficiency. And the implication therefore is that, uh, say, uh, since the relative entropy measures uh, or better still, it's a measure of the inefficiency of assuming that the distribution is Q of X when the true distribution is P of X. Now, if we assume to know the true distribution P of X, for instance, of a random variable, we could construct a code with the average description length of H of P, that is the entropy of the true distribution. And if we now use this code the, uh, uh, for the wrong distribution, then we could therefore construct another code such that H of P plus the differential entropy P, Q, beats may therefore be used on the average to describe the random variable. So you should note that the relative entropy between two probability mass function is always greater or equal to zero. So in other words, it is always non-negative. It is always non-negative. And the relative entropy between the two distributions will only be the same as zero if and only if P and Q have the same distribution. Now, technically, we can say that the relative entropy is not a true distance between distributions since it is not symmetric, okay? because 
the relative entropy of P and Q is not the same as the relative entropy between Q and P, except the distributions are the same. Okay? So we cannot really say it's a true measure of distance since they are not symmetric. And also, we don't uh, satisfy, it does not satisfy the triangle inequality such that the sum of two sides of a triangle should be greater or equal to the top side. Now, with this information, we can go on to describe mutual information. That is the, info, the, the, the amount of information gained per receive symbol. So it is a measure of the amount of information that can be obtained about one random variable, say x, by observing another random variable y. So in other words, we have we have an ri on the random variable y. So the amount of information we're able to gain about x such that y is the same as x or is the same as the approximate value. So the amount of information we are able to gain about this guy, about x from y is the mutual information. So it is important in communication where it can be used to either maximize or minimize the amount of information shared between the sent and the received signals. So mutual information of x relative to y can therefore be given as the transformation between this is the same as the sum x, y, then times x, y. Now, where the information, the, the mutual information here is weighted by the probability distribution. Now, this is weighted by the probability. distribution, that is the joint probability distribution, P of X, Y, right? Over all the possible events such that this is the same as log P of X given Y divided by P of X. It's so therefore, the mutual information is the same, sigma xy to xy, the joint probability distribution, log to this two anyway, the conditional probability of x given y divided by the probability of x. This will give us bits Okay, now, if this is so, we can also recall from Bayes' theorem that the joint probability distribution is the same as the product of the conditional probability of x given y times the probability of y, okay? And now the probability of, the conditional probability of x given y will be the same as the ratio of the joint probability distribution and the probability of y, such that if we plug this entire process into the mutual information expression, then we can show that the sum of the product of the joint distribution log and log p of x y divided by p of x y. 
and you will observe that the mutual information is the same as the relative entropy between the joint distribution or joint probability distribution, that is P of X, Y, and the product distribution, P of X, P of Y. Okay? So hence, the mutual information is the expected value of X, Y, log P of X, Y, divided by P of X, P of Y. Hence, the mutual information is a measure of the amount of information that one random variable contains about another random variable. It is the reduction in the uncertainty of one random variable due to the knowledge of another random variable. And now, with all of these, we could investigate, or better still, put forward some of the interesting properties of mutual information. Okay. So the first here is that mutual information of the channel is symmetric, okay? So mutual information of the channel is symmetric. Symmetric. That is, the mutual information of x, y is the same as the mutual information of y, x. Now, if you recall from this theorem, the joint distribution is the same as the probability of x given y and the probability of y. And it's also the same as the probability of y given x times the probability of x. Okay. And now, if that is true, then it means that this and this are equal, right? So we need the probability of x given y. Probability of y is the same as the probability of y given x as probability of x. And now if we rearrange this, see that probability of x given y divided by the probability of x is the same as the probability of y given x divided by the probability of y. So once we cross multiply, you get this. So this and this is the same. And now if you recall, you see that the mutual information is given as this. And it's also the same as this. Hence, we already showed that this expression and this expression are equal by this theorem, okay? So this now, and the same as y of x, right? Hence, the mutual information is symmetric. So we we'll look at another property of mutual information. Now, the mutual information can be expressed in terms of the entropies of the channel input, output or output, and the conditional entropies, such that the mutual information is the same as the source entropy minus the condition entropy or the output entropy minus the conditional entropy. So from this, we can show either of them and then the other one follows directly from there. So let us show this, for instance. We already know that mutual information is the same as uh, Summation of xy 
is the same so x y x y x y x so x y x y now uh, you can also present this as summation p of x, y log p of x, y plus sigma p of x, y log p of x. Then this can also be written as negative sigma p of x y log one over x y so that this and this will truncate itself and then we get this so if we do that that would be plus sigma p of x and one p of x Now, if we recall the law of total prob probability, now P of X is the same as sigma Y, P of X, Y, which is the same as sigma Y, X, Y, X, Y, X, Y. So that, so that the mutual information now the same it's negative sigma of x y log one over of s y plus sigma p of x P of x. So if we rearrange, we have sigma p of x one over p of x minus sigma p of x y one over p of x sigma y. This is the same as h of x minus h of x given y. Therefore. This also can be shown using the same approach. Once more, we have a third property that the mutual information is always non-negative, okay? It's always non-negative, always. It's greater, is it greater or equal to zero? Now, since we already have that, the mutual information is the same sigma of xy, xy log given y divided by p of x, then by this theorem, this theorem. We already know that p of x y is the same as p of x y divided by p of y. Then, if we plug this into this expression, so the mutual information therefore become p of x y log p of x y divided by p of x p of y. Okay. And this is the same as the relative entropy between P of 
x1 and the product p of x p of y. And we already know that the relative entropy between two probability mass function pq is greater than or equal to zero. So hence, mutual information between x and y is greater than or equal to zero. And also, for property, the mutual information is related to the joint entropy and the input and output entropy is such that h of x plus h of y minus h of x y. So since we already established that the mutual information is the same as h of x minus h of x given y, and then we also know that H, the joint entropy is the same as H of X given Y plus H of Y. Then, once we plug this in, once we plug this into this into this expression rather, so I'll show from here that. Okay, let us uh, make some substitutions first. From here, we can show that h of x given y is the same as h of x y minus h of y. So if we plug this now into this expression, so have the chart information to be given as h of x, minus h of x y minus h of y that's pretty straightforward so that's h of x plus h of y minus h of x y okay it sounds pretty cool now that we have been able to walk our way throw into mutual information. So the possibility of either, um, I said of minimization now, <laughs> of uh, either maximizing or minimizing uh, this mutual information, depending on the circumstances, then we may be able to achieve data compression and also data transmission. So one more property we'll look at is um, self-information, okay? So self, that's property five, self-information. So this is the mutual information of X by observing X. It's also the same as the mutual information of Y by observing Y. And we'll observe that this is the same as H of X and this is the same as H of Y. Now we can easily show this. Uh, so we're going to split this board. So let's split. Okay. Recall that the mutual information is the same as the relative entropy between the joint distribution and the product distribution. This now gives us sigma p of x, y, log p of x, y divided by the product distribution, p of x, p of y. And we can further expand this. There we have sigma p of x, y, log p of x, y, to be minus, right?
sigma p of x, y, or p of x, p of y, right? So I think I'll need some space. So this now is going to be the same as sigma p of x, y, or p of x, y, minus sigma p of x, y, or p of x, or sigma p of x, y, or p of y. So this is also going to sigma p of x, y, p of x, y, minus sigma p of x, y, or p of x, minus sigma p of x, y, or p of y. Okay, now from our previous example, we're able to show that this is going to be the same as negative sigma p of x, y, log 1 over p of x, y. This is going to be plus sigma p of x. This is x, x, right? <laughs> Everything here is x, 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 okay? It's not x, y, it's x, x, okay? That was an oversight. Comma, x, comma, x, okay? It's comma, x. It's a distribution between itself, right? x, x. When one is to use to clean input and output, and now you have to play with input and input. <laughs> but sorry for the mix up anyway. Uh, x, 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 yeah, p of x, 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 yeah. So this will be the joint distribution between x and then log p of x minus sigma p of joint distribution log p of x, this p plus this one over, one over, yeah. Okay. Now, if we evoke the log sum inequality, now by the log sum inequality, okay. We have that, it says that for n positive numbers, a1, a2, a sub 2 to a sub n, so and b sub 1, b sub 2 to b sub n, the, the log sum inequality says that taking i from 1 to n, a sub i log a sub i over b sub i is greater or equal to the sum a sub i, i from 1 to n, log sigma a sub i, i from 1 to n, divided by sigma i taken from 1 to n, b sub i. Mm -hmm. With equality, with equality, if and only if, a sub i is equal to b sub i, and that is a constant, okay? And, and in this case, we have equality anyway, because x, 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 okay? Now, it means that we can represent all of this expression such that p of x, with the same, okay. Now, before we move on, it means that sigma p of x x can be represented 
in terms of the uh, law of total probability. So if we recall law of total probability, now you see that P of X is the same as Sigma X, P of X, X, yeah, which is the same as Sigma X, P of X given X times the probability of X. So it means that this expression can be replaced, okay, by P of X. And hence, the mutual information between x by of x by observing x will therefore become negative now, sigma. Now, the sigma p of x can be replaced by p of x p of x and then this p of x can be replaced by sigma right by sigma p of x of x that is by now this can be replaced by sigma p of x x and we already know by the law of total probability that this is equal to p of x so log one over p of x, right? Then plus sigma p of x s is the same as p of x. So sigma p of x, then log one over p of x plus sigma p of x log one over p of x. So please don't forget that we could only play with this parameter based on the log sum inequality property, such that this parameter can be replaced by the sum of all the parameters sigma. And if that is true, then by the law of total probability, this can be replaced by the probability such that we have this. So this can cross this, so mutual information between x x is the same as sigma p of x log 1 over p of x, which is the same as h of x, source entropy. Okay, that's fine. Well, in our subsequent classes, or classes uh, we'll be holding much later, other activities will be discussed in terms of data compression and, and the like. So uh, just before we wrap up this class, I think uh, let us talk about data pro processing a bit, okay? So data, okay, let's, let's change the color. Data processing inequality. So data processing is used to show that no clever manipulation of the data can improve the inferences that can be made from the data. And to establish this notion, I have to look at a Markov chain. So by definition, random variables x, y, z, for instance, are set to form Markov chain, the form Markov form Markov chain in the order x, y, then pointing to c. If the conditional distribution of z, that is the conditional distribution of c, depends only on y, note the conditional distribution 
equals z depends only on y and is conditionally independent of x. So x, y, and z forms a Markov chain if and only if the joint probability mass function can be written in this order. Say x, y, we have z. So this is the probability that y, given that x was transmitted, and this probability of z, given that y was transmitted. So assume we have this as a probability of x, then the joint probability distribution will be the same as p of x, p of y given x, and then p of z given y. Okay. Now, the implication of this is that we have a Markov chain, x, y, z, if and only if x and z, if and only if x and z are conditionally independent. Conditionally independent. Given y. Except y is zero, then x and z will be dependent on each other. Okay. Now, uh, the second point here, or better still, from this, we can also establish that Markovity implies that P of X joint distribution Y is the same as P of X, Y, Z, P of Y. It's the same the probability of X, Y, and the probability of Z given Y, probability of Y. And this now is the same as the probability of X given Y. And it's a probability of z. When we begin to talk about channel matrix and channel capacity, yes. things will get a little clearer. And the second point here so we have a Markov chain in this order. We we'll say it implies that z, y, and x equally forms. The Markov chain. So if we have this Markov chain, then this also exists. Hence, uh, this condition can therefore be written as x and y given z. Okay. And then we also have that if, for instance, z is a function of y. Then the Markov chain X, Y, Z exists. Hence, no processing of Y, deterministic or random, can increase the information that Y contains about X. Therefore, the data processing inequality states that if we have a Markov chain X, Y, Z, if this Markov chain exists, then the mutual information between X and Y must be greater than or equal to the mutual information between X and Z because X and Z are conditionally independent. Okay. Now, since for the Markov chain x, y, 
z that the mutual information between x and y must be greater than or equal to the mutual information between x and z. We can show that by chain rule that the mutual information therefore can be expanded as mutual information of x, y, z would be the same as mutual information x, z. Join information Let's see this is the same as the mutual information of x given y plus the mutual information of x given z y. So since x and z are conditionally independent given y, we can as well infer that the mutual information between x, z, y is not the same as, is, is the same as zero, right? Same as zero. The same as zero because there's no information, okay? And then, the mutual information between x, y, z will be equal to or greater than zero. Now, if that is that, then the joint of the mutual information, z, is the same as information between c plus Information between the text. And now this is the same as the mutual information between X and Y. By inspection, now by inspection, we have that. So that. So in a similar vein, similarly, we can equally show this greater than zero. Now, if if um, z is a function of y, for instance, then the mutual information will be greater between x and y will be greater than the mutual information between x and the function of y, such that the Markov chain here, we have x, y, g of y. Okay. So this forms the Markov chain. So the mutual information between X and Y would definitely be greater than the mutual information between uh, X and G of Y, such that the mutual information between Y and G of X would definitely be greater than the mutual information between G of Y and X. So the mutual information between Y and G of Y definitely greater than the mutual information between G of Y and X. Okay. So um, so hence functions of Y 
cannot increase the information about x, okay? So it means that the functions of y, functions of y cannot increase the information about x. That is the implication, okay? And then if x, y, and z forms a Markov chain, then the mutual information y z will be less than mutual information x y. Call that mutual information x y z is equal to zero by Markovity, right? Zero. And then mutual information z is greater or equal to zero. So then the mutual information is y z must be less than or equal to the mutual information between x y. So the dependence of x and y is decreased or remains unchanged by the observation of a downstream random variable z. So now we'll note that if x, y, z do not form Markov chain, then the mutual information C may be greater than this one. Okay. So let's look at one more interesting property, which is sufficient statistics. So let's assume that T, now let T of X be any statistic, okay? Let T of X be any statistics. That is a function of the sample, like sample mean or variance. So if theta X and T of X forms a Markov chain, by data processing, we know that the mutual information between theta and T of X must be less than or equal to the mutual information between theta and X, okay? For any distribution of theta. So if equality holds, no information is lost. Therefore, the statistics T of X is said to be sufficient for theta if it contains all the information in X about theta. So the function T of X is said, so in other words, let's, let's just put that up form, more formally. So the function T of X is said to be is sufficient statistic statistic relative to the family f of theta of s if x is independent of theta given t of x for any distribution of theta, for any distribution of theta. That is theta t of x x forms a Markov chain. Now this is the same as the condition for equality in data processing, such that the mutual information between theta and x is the same as the mutual information between theta and t of x for all distribution of theta, okay, on theta. Hence, of this, in this case, Sufficient statistics proves mutual information. 
Now, a statistic T of X is a minimal sufficient statistic relative to F of F sub theta of X if it is a function of every other sufficient statistic U. So that is, we have theta T of X, U of X, and X forms the Markov chain. So hence, a minimal sufficient statistics maximally compresses the information about theta in the sample. And then, Fano's inequality follows directly now, given that a random variable y is known. We know the random variable. And we wish to guess the value of a correlated random variable x. So Fano's inequality therefore helps in relating the probability error in guessing the random variable x to its conditional entropy. So you want to recall that the conditional entropy of a random variable x given another random variable y is zero if and only if x is a function of y. So we can estimate x from y with zero probability of error if h of x, y is equal to zero. Okay. That is mutual information, x, y, for instance, is the same as h of x minus h of x, y. So what we are saying here is that if this is zero, then we can actually estimate, we can, we can estimate x from y, zero probability of error. Because on observing x from y, we can see that we have the compressed data, the entropy. So hence, it should be possible to estimate x with a low probability of error only if the conditional entropy is small. So when the conditional entropy is as small as possible, then Fano's inequality qualifies the idea. So now let us uh, let us assume we intend to estimate a random variable x having a probability distribution p of x. So s has a probability distribution p of x. Now, if we observe a random variable y that is related to x by the conditional distribution, that is x, y. So there's a conditional distribution here, probability of y given x. Now from y, we can derive a function. Say this is equal to the estimated value such that g of, a, g of y is the same as x hat. So we want to derive this function. Where x hat is the, estimate of, is the estimated value of x and it takes on values from, you know, uh, so it means that s hat takes on values from x hat. So if, for instance, from the above description, if x is not the same as the estimated value, we observe that x, y, x hat forms a Markov chain. And the probability of error may be defined as the probability of x hat not being the same as x, right? So Fano's inequality therefore states that for any estimator, so this is what Fano says, Fano's inequality 
says that for any for any estimator, say S hat, such that we have a Markov chain x y and x hat with the probability of error uh, being the same as x hat such that x hat is not the same it's not the same as x rather it's not the same as x we have that the entropy of the probability of error plus probability of error log mod the distribution is greater or equal to the entropy of that as is greater or equal to the conditional entropy of x given x hat was received and is greater or equal to the probability of x given that y was received. And by intuition, by intuition, when the conditional entropy is equal to zero, then the probability of error is equal to zero, then S hat is equal to X. So the inequality can be weakened by say one plus the probability of error log mod X is greater or equal to the conditional entropy. So that the probability of error is the same as h of x given y minus one divided by mod of x. Now, if x and y have no knowledge of themselves, then x must be guessed with any info without any information. Matter. So if we assume that x is an element of one, two, all the way to m, such that the probability p1 is greater than or equal to p2 is greater than or equal to all the way to pm, the best guess of x will be x half equal to one. And the probability of error then will be PA for the one minus P1. Now, Fano's inequality already shows that the entropy of the probability of error plus the product of the probability of error log M minus one is greater than the entropy of the source. And the probability mass function achieves the bounds for the quality given by P1, P2, P3, all the way to Pm. is equal to one minus P, or half P over N minus one, the total. So if we assume that X and X prime or inverse are two independent and identically distributed random variables with entropy H of X, that means they are independent and identically distributed random variables. And then they also have the entropy H of X. Now, the probability at X being the same as X prime, that is the probability of error, is the same as summation p squared of x, x. And the following inequality holds such that probability of x being the same as x prime is greater or equal to two to the power of minus h of x. Okay, the h of x is the entropy when x and x prime are independent and identically distributed. And with equality, this 
of call with equality. If and only if X has a uniform distribution. So suppose that X has a distribution P of X, then by Jensen's, Jensen's, Jensen's inequality, by Jensen's inequality, which says that if F is a convex function, then the expectation or expected value of f of x is greater than or equal to the function of the expectation of x. So hence, you can therefore show that 2 to the power of the expected value of log p of x is less than or equal to the expected value 2 log p of x which implies that 2 to the power of minus h of x is the same as 2 to the power of sigma p of x, which is the expected value expectation of p of x is less than or equal to sigma p of x, which is the expectation value 2 log p of x, which is the same as sigma p squared of x. I think this is a good place to stop. We'll see you in our next class. Bye for now.